Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we are going to be driving into, in this video, the installation of the grain view system into one of our grain bins. What we're gonna be doing in really simple terms is we're gonna be giving our grain bins a brain. The ability to actually monitor and change what's going on with our investment in the grain that's actually in those grain bins. There's gonna be corn in this grain bin that we're putting the grain view system into this year. We'll be covering the process of the install the, all the components that go to it. And then we're gonna be talking about how actually that grain bin can collect data, communicate with us, and tell us even when things are, might be going bad with the, the crop that's in the bin. If you would, before we jump in, please give the video a thumbs up button. We don't ask for that very often. Sure appreciate it. This is some really cool technology and it'll be fun to learn what we can do with it. Wheel myself over the one arm chair. So at the core of this system are these cables. These cables will be submerged down into your grain uh, where they can actually have the sensors right there is one of the sensors. They can read the temperature and the moisture of the grain. Now granted you can also get just temperature sensors in your grain bin but you cannot get just moisture sensors because to have accurate moisture sensors you have to also know the temperature. So temperature and moisture or just temperature. And then these cables actually get installed on the roof of the bin. Greg was out here on a much nicer day than it is today to install those. Other than then it happened to be really windy and made the audio for the GoPros horrible. We're just trying to get our location figured out on this first one. Um, we've got one of our roof support rings kind of here in the way. So we're gonna stay below it, just making sure we get our hole drilled in the right location. You no, know, it's a little different on every bin diameter, so you, sometimes you just gotta figure it out. So we'll have to pick that piece up later. <laughs> then we'll just take a little bit of silicone too, and that kind of helps as well. Yep. Yeah, a little bit of silicone. To, the water runs off these bin roofs so fast that you don't need much, but just want to obviously make sure we don't get any water in there. So now we've got our cable in. We can see there's a side definitely marked up. Just check this before we screw it down. So perfect, we're out of the way of our uh, fring. So now we will go ahead and actually screw the cable down to the roof panels. So get that tight. We just need to come back and tighten up our bottom bolts and that cable install is done. So the sensor cables are actually supported by this bracket right here. Uh, installed onto the ribs of the roof. Take a hole saw and you hole saw a hole so the cable can go down through. And then if you look actually on the sensor, right here is this black foam that squashes down. With a little bit of silicone and actually seals that up, that's how the sensors are actually pushed down into the grain bin. A couple things to note about that. Uh, ordered five cables. We did that because four cables around the outside of the bin and then there's one supposed to be in the middle. However, you can have five cables if you have a spreader, which we have spreaders, right? You just can't happen to have five cables if you got the big, massive gravity flow spreaders like we do. Other than that, those cables then are just dropped down through and then you tie with like a fishing string. Or instead of fishing string, you can use a, a light poly string uh, just like this. Or something along those lines to the floor each year. And if you happen to have a sweep, as the sweep goes around, it cuts those fishing strings. Doesn't have to move the cables, it'll be above your sweep. Uh, and then you just, at the end of the year, when you go before you go to fill it again, you just take a little bit of fishing string 
and uh, tie them right back down to the ground. Another important thing to mention about this is that it does not have to be new grain bins. It can be older grain bins. Uh, it can be grain bins of various different sizes, and it also doesn't have to be a GSI grain bin. It can be another brand's grain bin, and I believe you can actually order the system when you order a grain bin, and I think it qualifies for some of the discounts as you can get different discounts during the buying periods of grain bins. And if it's not that way, tell them I said it should be that way. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's that way though. And if it's not that way, I'm also pretty sure that they're not gonna change it because I said that it should be that way. So we got all the parts. Let's go get them all installed in the grain bin. Gotta line it up so this bolt, the bottom and the top bolt should line up on the high sides of the rib, you know what I mean? Okay. And then you can look at that level. Get one in. Right here next to this guy. Uh -huh. Should be on the same, obviously high ribs. And I'd put what top first one in and yeah. we'll get the level on it. Still like it? Yep, good. Clint's with us here today. We are going to be finalizing the install of the grain view system. Uh, the first two modules that we hung up on the control on the on the bin so far. I think one of them is the weather station, right? Is this correct? Yep. So we have the weather station here, uh, which is going to record obviously the outside conditions, outside air temp, humidity, so we know what the conditions are outside at all times, and then that'll tie directly through a connection box into our FCM, which is a fan control module that will control the fans automatically and be able to read that information into automation. And then what's this one that we just... Yep, so then we have, there? on this bracket, we have our gateway, which is a communication communication gateway to be able to get that information remotely uh, to the cloud, so you can remote into that information and check, change settings, whatever you need to do uh, with the power supply that uh, powers that unit up to, to get all that information. So we're going to spend some time here getting things everywhere installed and then hopefully we can dive into actually looking at what's inside this grain bin. Along with installing a few other things, so this is the mus Mux Bust box, right? Am I saying that right? Mux Bust? Mus Mux. Mux Box. Mux Box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight cables can go into this box. Then this box connects to... Uh, this yellow box, which has got a solar panel on it, a backup battery in it, um, which reads in the cables and then supplies the data down and the power to this. So if guys were to have the cables without the fan control module, they can run it through the solar panel. So this is what's going to go up on top of the bin uh, to connect the cables and send the data back down to the stuff that we installed on the bin. Correct. Correct. And, yep, and those cables can be temperature or moisture and temperature. So what Clint's installing now is the plenum sensor, is that correct? Plenum sensor, correct. Plenum sensor. So and the reason they're installing a plenum sensor, which I thought was because of uh, like you think to see if there's like heat being blown in there from like a, a low temperature burner or an actual like dryer bin, and that's not actually the case. They want to know what the actual air being blown into the bin is because they take the air that's getting put in from the weather station, but as it gets compressed and actually pushed in underneath the floor, because there's a false floor here, uh, the floor of the bin's actually right here. They wanna know the actual quality of the air that's being pushed up through the grain. And that's how they get this. As well as we read the static pressure as well. So we know what the pressure uh, while the fans are running. And so if it ever goes up or we know what the static pressure is, what the airflow is. So we'll make sure that uh, it's always good airflow going through the grain mass as well. Just hole saws into the side of the bin. It's got a, a rubber washer that you tighten down kind of like a, a boat plug, realistically. And then the plenum sensor is installed.
So part of the grain view system is its ability to actually control your fans uh, based upon some settings that you have. Uh, you want to cool the corn down, you want to dry the corn out, or do you want to hydrate some soybeans? Um, it will run the fans depending upon the parameters that it has set. To do that, however, you have to actually still add a switch to your fan controls, otherwise your fans are just, you know, uh, on off that you have. So you actually have to add this switch, which you got the chance of off, manual, so you can turn your fan on and off if you want, how you want to do it. And then you can turn it on but off by its on off switch just like it would normally be or you have to switch it into the auto mode that way the grain view system can control it one thing that i've asked about a couple of times and what people might think about is the rehydration of the soybean so adding some moisture back into the soybeans the other thing you can think about is actually being able to dry down some corn how well it will dry down corn Clint and I actually talked about this. So these grain bins are not set up to be actually be drying the corn. We don't have the fans for it. So Clint and I were actually talking is say you were wanting to try and take some moisture out of corn, especially corn, or you talked about somebody that does rice with these. Right. Um, you're going to want a lot of fan for that. And you, you want to explain why that is or how you would gauge that, I guess you could say. For, for sure. So we would like to see when you're changing moisture of grain, we like to see one CFM per bushel. When you're completely full, if you're gonna have wet corn or yeah. wet grain all the way to the top of the bin, um, you're kind of obviously limited on size. These are perfect natural air drying bins essentially for mm. height wise. Okay. Usually 20, 25 foot of sidewall height uh, is, is ideal. And at that point you can spec fans or we can spec fans at one CFM per bushel when you're completely full. A good rule of thumb that we like to see essentially just kind of get you in the ballpark is for every thousand bushels of grain you need one horsepower of fan so i think you said thirty thousand or thirty two thousand is what kind of what these bushel bins, bins yep so ideally you'd be just rough rough ballpark about 30 horsepower fan and we have 15s on these so we would basically need two fans on these bins and that's where in the future if we decide to continue to build bins uh, you can kind of game plan that a little bit where as in have a bin where corn's at 18% where it's too dry to dry, a little too wet, you could put it in a bin, but if you wanted to dry it down at 18%, you could target that bin, plan on going into that bin, and with the right amount of fan, you could actually take that moisture out of that grain naturally, tied in with the grain view system. The other thing we're doing is adding a few safety stickers because now this fan can run automatically. So it's good to remember that in case you're ever working on it, make sure everything's shut off. Um, obviously you turn off the power before you did that anyways, but we got some warning stickers with it that came with the kit. And we're pretty much, from what I understand, we're ready to go. We're gonna do a few tests, run the fan like it's in automatic mode from the portal and then check out the portal to make sure that it's getting all the sensor readings that it needs to get. And we'll go through the portal with you guys. Pulled it up here on our desktop. Now you can actually view this from your smartphone, uh, iPad, tablets, uh, laptop, however you want to view it, but we're doing it on the desktop today. This is the landing pad, which is the dashboard. If you had multiple bins, it would show up here. We just have one bin, so that's the only one that's connected, but say you had four, you'd have another one here, another one here, another one here to however many bins you have connected to a grain view uh, this also is more of a list form here to show things so here's our one bin again uh, right here is the notifications on what's going on on the bin uh, down here is the events those are kind of like a log of like I can show you this a log of things that have been happening with that bin things that have been changed uh, etc Teams would be if you want to add other people to view this information, either as an admin, uh, strictly be able to view it, or maybe they can change the uh, fan settings themselves. For instance, I added my dad to that. But we'll run back up here to the dashboard. Uh, it says that the fan is currently off. We'll click on this one. And then that brings up the bigger view of the bin here. You can see that the bin is 75% full. Uh, the four cables are kind of shown here in what order they're in. Uh, the manhole is right here, this black dot, one, two, three, four. Uh, and then you can see the cables here on this. Uh, the ones that do not have a number by them are the ones that are out of the corn, so they're not having a reading. 
right now the bin is reading temperature so we got some 56 degrees corn some 59 degrees corn some 50 degrees corn uh, some 43 degrees corn and as you can see uh, we've been trying to cool the corn down as it moves up through the bin uh, with a target temperature right now of 35 degrees the range is 30 to 40 uh, the percentage of the grain that's above the target right now is 47.62%. The percent that's actually on target is 52%. That number has been cre creeping its way up over the day or so that we've been looking at this. We can hop down to the percentage moisture. That is the percentage of the grain in the bin. This one I'm thinking is starting to work its way out of the grain. So it's a little bit high, but you can actually bump around and see where the moisture is on the bin. Uh, ranging from like the 13.8 all the way up to like 14.1 here. The target's 15%, and there's kind of your range again. Uh, reading out with a quick view of the bin and in a pie chart. You can move it to a grid uh, if you want to look at it this way. I like the bin look of it, or you can actually even dive it into when it loads its way up into a graph uh, where you can change the outdoor temperatures, things like that. Like outdoor temperature is not showing, outdoor temperature is now showing. Does that make sense? You can change this. I personally like the look of the bin read out here, and we can actually see what the weather is outside uh, 39.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The humidity is 79.8%, which would equate to if they were to pump air into the bin, it would be 16.8% moisture. Currently updated five minutes ago, the fan is off. It, it is in the smart storage mode, uh, and it's been hanging out there for three hours and 31 minutes off. Coming up to the alerts, these would be the things that would get pushed to us as a, a, an alarm that goes off as a monitoring system for the bin. Here would be like if the inventory in the bin decreases, so say you had a remote location and you're worried about people stealing your grain, uh, if the volume of your, on your bin goes down, it's going to tell you. If the temperature starts to rise in your grain pretty quickly, uh, that's kind of like a red flag that you got something bad going on, so that one's going to be uh, sent to us. And then as I'm just trying to learn how the fan's operating, I actually have an alarm going on when the fans turn on uh, to see when that's actually running. So we can hop into the fan controls here. For the fan controls, we can change the mode. So you can be remote controlled on the fan when you want to turn it on, turn it off. Maybe you want to start it, uh, start it in the morning and then you want to let it run for eight hours. You can do things like that. Automatic, it seems to be maybe where guys run it for when they're wanting to dry their grain out. You can also dive into uh, smart drying. And right now we're actually in the smart storage mode where we're just trying to get our grain cooled down because we're at a good moisture uh, to keep and store the grain really, really well. That's it, grain view system installed and running. It's set up to start cooling down that corn that's in that bin to a good storage level. And then when the corn may still be in there, it depends on what corn prices do. Uh, in the spring, we can bring the temperature back up, prevent the condensation and store that grain for as long as possible in really good condition. It'll be fun to learn all the features of the grain view system over the next year. See how I can put it to work and get an ROI from it. But thank you guys for watching. Like always, hit the thumbs up button for me on the way out. And we'll see you the next time pulling some smoke.